morning, viewers, and welcome to another edition of the Market Review, where we bring you developments in the financial and capital market as it relates to the economy. Today, Thursday, December 24, 2020, we take a look at the commodities market, and we'll be discussing around enabling infrastructure for Nigeria's commodities ecosystem. Let's give you an outline of what we'll be discussing today. First, Senate President Habs on Natural Resources Fund Utilization in Nigeria. We'll give you crude oil price updates and some excerpts from the Central Bank of Nigeria Inflation Attitude Survey, the National Bureau of Statistics Food Price Watch for November 2020, and interestingly, Pfizer is to provide U.S. with 100 million vaccines to combat COVID-19. The Natural Resources Fund should be deployed to diversify Nigeria's economy. Senate President Senator Ahmed Lawan made this call, speaking to the federal government, urging them to deploy the Natural Resources Development Fund to support enterprises with the agriculture and solid mineral sector as a way of diversifying the nation's economy. Senator Lawan made the call in his concluding remark after the upper chamber considered a bill during plenary seeking to develop tea and coffee growth production and marketing in Nigeria. According to the Senate President, the Natural Resources Development Fund is supposed to support such enterprises in diversifying the economy to the real sector such as agriculture, solid mineral development, and so on. According to him, I believe that we have a way of ensuring that this bill and subsequent other bills would definitely help to improve and sustain our economy. The sponsor of the bill, Senator Yusuf Abubakar Yusuf of Taraba Central, said the bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the National Tea and Coffee Development Council, if passed into law by the National Assembly, will enhance rapid economic diversification of the agricultural sector, as well as enhance revenue to government. He noted that states like Taraba, Plateau, and Cross River in the south are endowed with suitable climate and soil conditions that could be harnessed for commercial cultivation of tea, especially around Mambila, Just Plateau, and Obudu Range. He added that it is regrettable that governments have not made any major impact in terms of active involvement and or participating in tea and coffee grade production and marketing sectors of the economy. Speaking further, he said the only government presence in the development of tea production could be placed to the mid-70s when government officials netted into joint venture with some state governments and private entrepreneurs to set up a tea farm and factory in Taraba State, the lawmaker said. He further observed that the new Nigeria Development Company Limited, NNDC, and the Damawa State Government had since sold equity shareholding in the above-mentioned tea company, adding that the only government presence in the coffee development is the establishment of the Coffee Research Institute of Nigeria, CRIN. Yusuf further noted that the East African country of Kenya has for long been generating considerable foreign exchange earnings owing to the aggressive expansion of its vast growing potentials. According to the Namawa lawmaker, the National Tea and Coffee Development Council, Bill 2017 before the Senate, seeks to, amongst others, establish an authority that will be saddled with the responsibility of assisting farmers to set up outgrowers tea and coffee factories and provide some with ready training in the latest tea and coffee technology, as well as supply agricultural input in the aid of tea and coffee growth and production in Nigeria. Let's go on to the next developing story as we continue our updates on the commodities market space in Nigeria. And all steadied on Wednesday after earlier losses packed by an unexpected rise in US crude oil inventories. This is coming as President Donald Trump rattled the market by threatening not to sign a long awaited US COVID-19 relief bill the Brent crude futures were up 2% to $50.10 a barrel at 1.22 GMT, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures eased $0.01 cent to $47.01 a barrel. But contracts fell nearly $1 earlier in the session. The American Petroleum Institute API reported on Tuesday that U.S. crude inventories rose by 2.7 million barrels last week, compared with analyst expectations for 3.2 million barrel draw. The API said the U.S. glut alarm bells ringing, Stephen Bennock of World Brokerage PEM said. Oil also took a hit after President Trump threatened not to sign the $892 billion coronavirus relief bill 
saying he wants Congress to increase the amount in the stimulus checks that lawmakers approved during the week. The weaker US dollar, however, capped some losses. A weak greenback makes dollar-denominated commodities such as crude oil cheaper to holders of the currencies. Supply disruptions in Nigeria also lent support in this regard. ExxonMobil issued a force majeure on the Kwaibu crude oil export terminal last week after a fire hit the facility and injured two workers, a source told news agency Reuters. The conduct of inflation attitude survey by the Statistics Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria commenced in June 2009. It collects on a quarterly basis the views of households on changes in prices of goods and services in the last 12 months and the expectations of price changes over the next 12 months. Respondents' opinions were used to further explore the general public's understanding of the country's monetary policy framework. This is because inflation expectations and public understanding of what influences them are important parameters for effective monetary policy formulation. The four quarter 2020 inflation attitude survey conducted by the Central Bank of Nigeria during the period of 16 to 25, 25th of November 2020, with a sample size of 2,070 households randomly selected from 207 enumeration areas across the country, showed that it had a response rate of 98.7%. The highlights of the fourth quarter 2020 IS were as follows, respondents believe that the economy could end up weaker if prices start to rise faster than they do now. Given the tra trade-off between inflation and interest rates, more respondents prefer interest rates to fall than inflation rates. The majority of the respondents have no idea as who influences the direction of interest rates in Nigeria. Looking at inflation, the respondents were asked what would become of the Nigerian economy if prices started to rise faster than they do now. The survey results showed that 60.8% of the respondents believe that the economy will end up weaker. 8.4% stated that it will be stronger. 12.8% of the respondents believe it will make a little difference, while 17.9% did not know. The responses showed considerable support for price stability as the majority, 60.8%, agreed that the economy will end up weaker. This is consistent with the notion that inflation constrains economic growth. When asked how prices have changed over the past 12 months, respondents gave a median answer of 6.2% of the total respondents. 1.7% thought prices had gone down or not changed. 79.1% felt that prices had risen by at least 3.0%, while 18.3% felt that prices inched up by more than 1%, but less than 3% also. Those that had no idea were 0%. 0.9%. The median expectation of price changes over the next 12 months was that prices would inch up by 5%. From total responses, 66.7% of the respondents expected price to rise by at least 3% over the next 12 months. 17% expected prices to increase by more than 1%, but less than 3%. However, 15.1% of the respondents were optimistic that prices over the 12 months Next 12 months will either go down or remain the same. That's from the Central Bank of Nigeria giving updates. Now let's go on to the latest updates from the table of the National Bureau of Statistics. They've been discussing around the development on food prices. Selected food price watch data for November 2020 reflected that the average price of one dozen of aggregate eggs, medium size, increased year on year by 6.64% and month on month by 1.42% to 494.72 Kobo in November 2020 from 497.91 Kobo in October. While the average price of piece of aggregate eggs medium size price of one increased year on year by 8.68% and month on month by 2.36% to 44.75 Naira in November 2020 from 43.72 Naira in October 2020. The average price of one kilogram of tomato increased year on year by 25.6% and month on month by 2.77% to 316.16 Kobo in November 2020 from 307.63 Kobo in October 2020. The average price of one kilogram of rice imported high quality sold loose increased year on year by 23.46% and month on month by 3.71% to 549 Naira 98 Kobo in November 2020 from 530 Naira 52 Kobo October 2020. 
Similarly, the average price of one kilogram of yam tuba increased year on year by 16.26% and decreased month on month by minus 2.72% to 236.95 kobo in November 2020 from 2.47 kobo in October 2020. And let's take a look at the uh, development in the global community. Of course, Pfizer and Spadna BioNTech have agreed to supply an additional 100 million doses of their COVID-19 vaccine to the United States of America as the country seeks to widen its immunization program and revive its economy. The agreement brings the total number of doses to be delivered to the U.S. to 200 million, the company said yesterday in a statement. The drug maker expects to deliver all the doses to the U.S. vaccine and drug accelerator operation WAP speed by latest July 31st, 2021. Countries around the world are seeking supplies of vaccine, and they hope this will allow the reopening of schools and businesses and the resumption of travel. The UK has also begun administering doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech shot, and the European Drug Authority has cleared it for use this week, Monday. The US has been working to expand supplies of the frontrunner vaccine in light of the drug maker's commitment to other countries. Let's go on to our key focus for today on what the key enabling infrastructure for robust commodities ecosystem means. This means that we need stable power supply, and this can take the form of renewable energy, solar, and other forms, wind energy also. Various parts of the renewable energy is very important, and power supply, stable, stable power supply is key to ensuring that we can boost our ecosystem for commodities. Next is the connecting routes, especially to rural areas, where we have the resources to transport them, whether it's solid or agro. Investment in warehouses, very key. Warehouses, infrastructure, where we can keep these facilities, keep these products, and provide that process to ensure that the farmers are given the enabler to be involved actively in the market. Also, investment in storage facilities is key, particularly for agro products. The storage facilities will help to ensure that what is gotten from the farm and from the um, production base is kept safe and it's according to standards. Also, digital technology infrastructure is very important as we look at enhancing commodities trading. We've seen this year that uh, FX Commodities Exchange has done a lot in terms of building its technology infrastructure. And just this year, COMEX was the leading platform that got awards in the Agritech um, um, edition this year. Improved logistics and transportation is also very important. We're seeing that rail is uh, getting uh, traction. Already we see the Lagos Sibad and Rail uh, infrastructure on board. We need to see more of those uh, rails or cargoes that can carry um, agro products and all these other soil mineral products that can help the community value chain. And also we need to see cargo airports. Uh, cargo airports in Nigeria are very important that can carry uh, most of these products across board. Uh, state um, airports, various airports across the country, we need to have at least two or three functional cargo airports that can really support this commodity ecosystem. And that'll be all for this edition of the Market Review. You can join our website, www.prosheng.com, and on the website, go to the right hand bar, click on commodities to get all the updates on the commodities market. You can also um, send your views and comments on infrastructure that can enable a robust commodities ecosystem in Nigeria. Send your views and comments to news at or you can tag us at WebTVNG. To come your way again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day and in advance, a Merry Christmas to you in advance.